Governor Kim Reynolds of Iowa. Governor, appreciate you being here. Oh, hi, Buck. It's great to be with you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks Absolutely. for being the voice of reason. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I do what I can. Thank you, Clay, and I do our best. Thank you. Um, you do. I wanted to, we we want to get to Iowa, the caucuses, uh, yep. all, all that, and your endorsement in a second. Uh, but I I think the border is among the most important issues in the country right now. And anyone who listens to the show knows that this has been a something that I've I've been deeply involved in covering and spending time down there now for for many years. You have a plan that I wanted you to discuss uh, with everyone for what can be done at the border, given that it's the most wide open it's ever been. You've got at least six, seven million have come in under Biden. What can be done about this and, and how would the military play a role? Well, first of all, I mean, I think it's it's also Ron DeSantis's plan, and it's just another example of how we align on policies and what needs to be done uh, to not only secure our, our nation's or to, to make sure that we're taking our nation's security into account, uh, but to stop the inflow of human traffic and, most importantly, drugs that we're seeing pouring over uh, the border. So, first of all, you re- re- reinstall the Remain in Mexico policy. You actually build the wall. He's got a plan in place to pay for it. So he actually will pay Mexico pay for the wall uh, through the remittance taxes. Uh, in addition to that, get the military down on the border and identify the cartel for what they are, a terrorist. Uh, you know, we are seeing the impact in Iowa. Every single state is a border state. Uh, we have uh, two major interstates that run through Iowa, Interstate 35 and Interstate 80, and it is absolutely a direct path from Mexico to the Midwest for human traffickers and drug cartels. And we are seeing exponentially the number of seizures increase. We've seen a 500 percent uh, increase in fentanyl, 100 percent increase in meth. We've seen a 35 percent increase in drug related deaths. And this is what every single state is experiencing. We're not only seeing it in our urban areas, but we're seeing it infiltrate our rural areas as well. And so you have to stop the flow. You have to put back in place the policies that worked. Uh, you have to figure out a way to get the illegals back. I mean, we have seen uh, over I think it's over six million uh, illegals that have invaded our homeland. The number of known terrorists that have crossed the border is concerning, especially when you see what's happened uh, in Israel and around the world. And then just take into account the 1.6 million gotaways just in 2023. I mean, it's it's unconscionable. It is ridiculous. As a state, I mean, uh, Texas has been ground zero for the last two and a half years. They, Buck, they have allocated uh, $9 billion of taxpayer money in Texas just to do the job of what this president and this administration should do. It's a dereliction of duties. It's unconscionable. It's an assault uh, on um, our, our Constitution and and the American people. And it's ridiculous that this has fallen to the states. When Governor Abbott sent out a request, I was so proud of the number of Republican governors that stood up. Uh, we not only sent our Iowa National Guard down to the border to provide some relief, uh, but we also sent our law enforcement down. This is the second time we've sent law enforcement down. Now, I was proud to say that I didn't use any taxpayer dollars. I figured out a way to use some of those ARPA dollars that were coming into the state. After all, it is the federal government and this president's responsibility to protect our border and the sovereignty of this country. And so I used those dollars uh, to, to get our people down to the southern border to help help provide them some relief and to put in place a mechanism uh, to prevent them from stepping on uh, American soil and then just being processed and released into uh, the country. We had a unique situation. um, Oh, gosh, I think it was when Biden was first elected president, where we had a plane land at our Des Moines airport. There were 15 young girls on that plane. And in the middle of the night, I had no idea they were coming. Somebody actually was able to... um, uh, video that and provide evidence to us. And we started working with the Biden administration and for months they denied having anything to do with it. I said, well, we're not letting up uh, because if it's not you, then this is human trafficking that's taking place and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Only after months and months of denial, they finally admitted that, yeah, it was Homeland that was actually, you know, transporting them. And they didn't stay in Iowa. There was charter buses waiting for them on the tarmac to take these poor girls uh, to several other states. So, as a, as a governor, we have a responsibility to protect the health and safety of the citizens that we serve. And when you don't know when they're coming into your state, how they're coming into your state, uh, it makes that uh, really, really difficult. So so I appreciate uh, the program and the uh, uh, plan that Ron has put in place. And what gives me great confidence about that plan 
is because this guy has followed through with 100% of his promises that I know he will deliver. And on day one, he will do exactly what he said he's going to do and start implementing those similar policies that will, that will start to protect uh, this country and American citizens. Uh, and it just that's like step one in getting this country back on track and, uh, you know, getting us back yeah. to the great country that we are. So, we're we're speaking of Governor Kim Reynolds. That. Yep, yep, Governor Kim Reynolds of Iowa, and and since you're you're kind of leading in already to my my next question for you, which is, uh, you are given uh, that you're a governor with uh, with very strong numbers in your home state of Iowa, and Iowa is the first in the nation, right? So we're going to have the caucus uh, what middle of January, I believe, right? January fifteenth. January fifteenth. Um, yep. Yep, January fifteenth, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, eyes of the nation are going to be on Iowa, obviously, as they are when this happens every four years. You have endorsed Governor Ron DeSantis. Governor Ron DeSantis, uh, I'm a Floridian. I think he's been a phenomenal governor here in Florida. He's trailing in all of the, at least the national polls, considerably to Donald Trump. Why did you go with DeSantis? Because you have a lot of Trump listeners and a lot of DeSantis listeners right now. So make the case, if you would, for why you thought he was the right choice. Well, for a whole host of reasons, and most importantly, I would encourage everybody just to look at his record, so we'll start there. But we are the First the Nation Caucus. I want to give you a little background. I felt like it was my responsibility to welcome all the candidates to the state to make sure that I could provide a platform for them to share their vision and message about why they thought they should have the opportunity to be the candidate to serve as the next president of the United States. And it was important that we did that. Uh, For seven months, uh, they have crisscrossed the state. They've really... Uh, pitched their vision. Uh, I hosted almost all of them at the Iowa State Fair. We did the fair side chats. Again, a lot of one-on-ones. I've had opportunity to participate in the events and really to see how engaged Iowans were. So that's why I don't believe the national polls. I talked to a lot of Iowans. I'm very much on the ground across the state uh, doing a lot of one-on-ones. And people are showing up at all of the events. They're listening. They're asking good questions. We take this very seriously. We are starting, uh, we are starting to see the field narrow. And uh, so we did that for seven months. But as I have continued to see the decline of this country, and as I have seen, uh, you know, the, we're in a bad place. The country's in trouble. As I see what's happening around the world uh, with the weakness that this president has shown on the world stage, uh, it's emboldened our enemies. And, you know, I am a governor, but first and foremost, I'm a mom and I'm a grandma and I'm an American. And I, I just could not sit on the sidelines any longer. There's too much at stake. Uh, I, we need somebody that can win. We don't get a redo. We need somebody that not only has the skill, but has the resolve to just reverse the madness that we're seeing on uh, every single day. I need somebody that's disciplined and focused and really focused on the future and not looking to the past. And we need somebody that can on day one get to work and implement. And I I appreciate all their vision and what they say they're going to do. But when I started looking at the records and I started looking at how it aligned with what we've done here in Iowa, I know from a governor's perspective how hard it is to do things as a governor, to make things happen, especially big things. It's easy to go in with a light agenda and try to, you know, tweak around the edges, but to take on things like COVID and Disney and and parental choice and educational freedom, uh, you got to be a leader and you got to be able to take the barbs and you got to be able to execute. And Ron has executed on 100% of his promises. And And you you think uh, he can win in Iowa and then you think he can win nationally? Oh, I think he could win in Iowa or wouldn't get on board. He definitely can win in Iowa. The polls, first of all, nobody should be paying attention to the national polls. This isn't a national race. This is a caucus and a primary, and it's early. Iowans break late. Uh, I'm seeing it. I've had so many people come up. Uh, you can you can sense the momentum. Uh, he's the only one that has the ground game in place, and that's really, really important. He's the only one that's put in the work. He's going to all 99 counties. He's doing retail politics face-to-face, taking questions, talking about his vision. Uh, but then you got to get people there. On a January, potentially winter night, on you know January 15th, you gotta be, you got to get people there that believe in what you're doing. If you look at the last Iowa poll uh, that was released, the same percentage of likely Republican caucus scores are considering both Trump and Ron DeSantis. It was at 67 percent. So uh, he's the second choice for most of them. I, you know, I just he, he definitely there is a path. He's got to work hard. He's doing what he needs to be doing to get there. And um, I, again, I would just encourage people to look 
at the record. And here's the other thing. We need somebody that can win. This guy has won. We both ran in 2018, barely made it across the finish line. Horrible year for Republicans. I think he won by 1%. I won by about 2 He came back in 2022. He won by 20. I won by 19 because we told our constituents what we were going to do, and we followed through with it. He brought in demographics that Republicans have not been winning for the last two elections, and I'm tired of losing. I want somebody that can get 62% of the Hispanic vote. I want somebody that can bring in independence. I want somebody that can give Republicans a hope and uh, in a vision and somebody that knows that they're going to follow through with what they say they're going to do that has the moral conviction to do the right thing even when it's really really hard he's principled and uh, to be honest and i'm just i mean this from my heart this is a personal decision he ron is probably the most effective leader that i have seen in my lifetime and it's inspiring for me um to see that i i appreciate it because again I know it's not I know it's not easy. So I need people to you know, sometimes we get so caught up on the delivery of the message. So we don't need an entertainer. We don't need look at how they execute. Look at what they've been able to do. Focus on who has followed through with what they said that they were going to do, because. Listen, we need somebody that not only can step in there and on day one execute and get this country back on track which I believe he'll do. If he can do for this country what he's done in Florida for the last four years, we're going to see America's comeback. And most importantly, he'll do just what, like he did from 2018 to 2022. Because he will follow through with what he said he's going to do, we're going to get eight years of awesome leadership instead of potentially, um, you know, four. So I just, we need to look long term. We need to look at, you know, what that means for this country. Um, and that's why I landed where I landed. Governor Kim Reynolds of Iowa, appreciate your passion, and thank you for making the time uh, for us here today on the show. Thanks so much. You bet. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you.